So my name is Barbara Dixon and I actually come from a long line of Irish in Canada uh, going back to the 1700s actually. Uh, my Irish uh, um, ancestry started in Newfoundland in the cod fishery. Um, many people came over, they were hired, they, um, the English planters in the cod fishery, they would um, pass by Southern Ireland on the way across the Atlantic to start the cod fishery season every spring and they would pick up um, young, strong Irish lads and bring them to Newfoundland to help in the cod fishery. And uh, I can trace my Irish in Newfoundland um, back, like I mentioned, into the 1700s, the Flynns, the Steeles, the Davises, and uh, they, uh, we like to say that they saw the pretty English girls in Newfoundland and they started marrying and settling down um, and putting down their own roots. And, uh, and here I am, 200, 250 years later, living in uh, Toronto, uh, Ontario, and um, I grew up in a home um, I was very much still um, steeped in Irish um, heritage. We had our corned beef and cabbage every Sunday for dinner, a good Irish stew, and we were taught to play the spoons growing up. We were taught a good Irish jig. Um, and of course, the, uh, the, the enjoyment around the kitchen table uh, was the center of our home. And uh, I'm proud to say that I'm Newfoundland Irish Canadian. So hello, my name is Barbara Dixon and um, I'm a local historian. I live in Toronto, Ontario, Canada, and um, I like to get out and about and I, uh, with my lovely husband, David Dixon, and we go out all over um, in the back roads of Ontario, but we also love to travel and we especially love the Maritimes going down um, once to Newfoundland to just introduce my husband to my family, but also um, just to just to enjoy the maritime provinces of Canada. And uh, uh, off the coast of Quebec City is um, a national historic site, Grosse Isle, and it was actually a quarantine station back in the 1800s. Um, opened, I believe, in 1832, and was open for over uh, 100 years. And it was meant as a quarantine station to um, uh, stop disease from entering Canada. Um, and they try to do a good job, but with the Irish immigration and the Great Famine, and especially in the back, Black Summer of 1847, they were completely overwhelmed. And uh, they brought, the Irish brought in their, um, in their hunger, they brought disease uh, to Gross Eel and into Canada. Many people died. I believe over 5,000 people died just at Gross Eel alone. Um, and, uh, because they were overwhelmed, people that didn't look sick got passed on, they were allowed to go into Canada and uh, fortunately they also had the typhus and the sickness, cholera, and they brought it up the St. Lawrence River um, to Montreal and then Kingston and all along into Toronto. Um, and I discovered I, ha I, I had a compassion for these people, these Irish, that they were buried in these unmarked graves at Gross Eel. And then as we traveled, um, in our travels to other quarantine stations in the Maritimes, St. John, Partridge Island, um, St. Andrews by the Sea, Hospital Island, um, Melva Island in Nova Scotia and Halifax, um, we discovered that uh, some of these quarantine stations, these people have been buried, hundreds and thousands have been buried, um, and they're not really remembered um, by uh, Canadians, people don't realize the um, the contribution that these Irish made to the founding of our country. Though those who survived, um, they built the canal system in Canada. They um, worked in the railways. They worked in the lumber yards. They um, uh, the Irish. Uh, I believe it's 14 percent of all Canadians, even today, have an Irish heritage. And my husband and I, in our travels, we found. Um, schoolyards where um, where once a pioneer cemetery was and the people are buried underneath the schoolyards but nobody knows that they're that we have this heritage that are buried um, so um, forgotten 
under these schoolyards and uh, other areas. Um, there's the Black Rock in Montreal. There are 6,000 Irish buried and Black um, Rock has the largest Irish graveyard in North America and yet it has the smallest Irish memorial stone there. Um, and I want to change that. I want to help um, bring this to light. I want to commemorate the Irish and their contribution to Canada, um, both for those who lived and died. And my husband and I are doing this through looking at how we remember where the Irish died and what commemoration have we um, undertaken to remember those Irish. Um, and we're doing that through um, Irish memorials, plaques, um, um, even an a unmarked a graveyard, an unmarked cemetery we're visiting and, um, and um, photographing. Um, and hopefully one day we'll um, be able to gather it all together and make a book. And um, we're hoping to call it Where the Irish Died. Um, and um, full with even GPS coordinates that any Canadian, anyone in the world can go and visit these sites to see where the Irish died and how we remember them and in their contribution to building Canada and to making this great nation that we have today.